Good morning, good morning, good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in the United States or across the world. This is Jeremiah and Jay Maminer with Jay Man Speaks, coming to you live with my buddy Ricky Carruth, Zero to Diamond. How are you, sir? What's up, man? Good to see you. Good to see you. So I just want to start out for those who don't know you, if they've been hiding in a cave somewhere in the middle of nowhere, um, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself? And we can get right into it in today's uh, Ed Talks number eight, where we're going to be talking about cold calling scripts and everything Ricky Carruth related. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. Um, man, good to see you. It's been a, been a second, man. You've been doing all right? Yeah, I've been doing good. You know, just yeah. trying, to, trying to catch up to you. Come on, man. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Just play, all in the mustard can't catch up. You know what I'm saying? That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, Basically, I uh, I'm a roofer, man. Like just to give everybody some context, you know what I'm saying? I uh, I'm a roofer by trade, and um, I got in real estate when I was 20. Um, and uh, you know, I, I put a lot of work in. I'm really competitive. I'm really curious. I want to know how to be the best, and I I'm gonna beat everybody. That's my nature. So, you know, I just started working really hard. I made a million dollars before I'm 23. Uh, invested in a lot of property, borrowed a lot of money. The market crashed on me, lost everything, slept in my car, slept on friends' couches, worked on an oil rig, went back to roofing, read a hundred books, learned everything I did wrong, yeah. flipped it all around, came back, and I've just been balling ever since. Balling out. So for those who want to see the full story, actually, I put it in the comments below. We did a Millennial Who Talks together where we went in-depth on your story. Yeah. Um, and with the Ed Talks, it's kind of like a spinoff. Like I find who is really good at something, and then we just talk in depth about it. And, I, and as soon as I thought about cold calling and scripts and prospecting, like you're the guy, the, the top of mind person that I thought of, because you do it live. Like there's other people that yeah, you pre they pre record it. Yeah. Of course, anybody could. If if I have ten takes, I'm gonna have one of those takes be good of me. Sure. Fizbo or an expired, but. You're doing this stuff live. You're doing it, you know, with other people, and you're you have a free coaching program that's just exploded in the last year. I think it was probably last year around this time when we when we did the thing, and then you told me like, "Yo, I'm just gonna go free. I'm just gonna go free. I'm gonna give it all away because I want to make a difference in the industry." Yeah. Tell us about your mission. Well, I um, so when I got back in real estate, just to finish my story, I started crushing it. And uh, what I realized was it was relationships over transactions, you know, like it's like it's people over the deal. Like one of my big things right now is like if you're a new agent, get out there and do a couple deals for free. Right. Like do some deals for zero commission. Help a, help a for sale by owner sell their property on their own. Really go over the top, really spend some time you know, advise them, help them, even make phone calls to try to find a buyer for that seller and don't ask them for a dime. Um, and like, if I would have done that single thing and had that mindset from day one, I would be so much further along in my mission right now, you know, but in the first half of my career, it was all about the deal. It was all about the money. It was all about the transactions. It was all about the ego. It was all about how many closings, this and that. And that, that was my downfall. Like when the market crashed, I didn't know how to scramble around and make it happen because it was about deals, not people. You know, like when the market crashes, people are still here. People like the crash doesn't make people die. You know what I mean? Like, right. like, like the people are still here and they still need to do things. Deals go away. There's less deals. So if you're deal, deal oriented, you're going to lose when the market crashes. But if you're people oriented, you'll actually... Um, surge. You'll actually, you know, go go further. You'll actually, uh, you know, create more business and build build a better, bigger business. So, um, when I came back, it took me a while. In 2008, when I came back, 2014 was the first year I did 100 deals in a year. Um, so I did 100 deals: 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm gonna do it 19, 20, 21, 22. Um, and I'm just a single agent with one assistant, right? So now after I sold a hundred properties a year for three years straight, okay, like been in the business for over a decade and got to where I was selling a hundred properties a year consistently every year, then I decided to write a book and start speaking, writing, coaching. Um, you know, a lot of coaches are out there, been in the business two years, three years, they've sold six properties, 
and they're out there trying to be this proclaimed coach and charge agents right. and teach them how to sell properties and stuff and make a million dollars when they've never done it. It's insane. I was talking to an agent yesterday and he was telling me, um, you know, that his mentor said to never take less than 6%, never negotiate off your commission. And I said, A, that's horrible strategy, B, right? B, who, how many how many deals has this guy ever done that you're that your mentor how many deals right. and uh, I was like he was like well he's kind of been you know you know you know you know off the saddle for you know this and that and I said okay look what's his best year ever like give give me his best year what he did in his best year ever he said like twelve deals or fourteen deals and I said that's the guy that you want to like like let let you know mentor you and and like consult you how to do this and how to like you know why would you take advice from somebody who has sold 12 properties in a year in his best year ever in his career right so I kind of got off subject there back to my mission I started speaking writing coaching after selling 100 properties a year for 3 years straight right and can have continued 3 more years and uh, I wrote two books, Zero to Diamond and List to Last. And then I started coaching um, and writing and speaking. So the Zero to Diamond coaching program is completely free now. When I started, I was charging. And like, I was just trying to figure it all out, you know? And one day I woke up and said, I'm not running my coaching business like I'm coaching my real estate agents to run their real estate business. Okay. Th this doesn't feel right. You know, right. I'm charging, I'm, you know, I'm telling them it's all about relationships, but here I am saying, you know, give me money, give me money, give me money for my coaching. And it just didn't, it didn't feel right. So when I flipped that around and made it all about the agents and all about the, the people and all about the industry, that's when everything started to really grow fast. Now we're growing by 58 a day that are into the Zero to Diamond program. And so many people are finding success with it, it because it's so different because most coaching you know it's it's all about you know what the what the prospect can do for you the agent but but that is that's turning prospects off that's the 1980s way to do it right, right? in today's world it's got to be about what you as the agent can do for the prospect okay and it all stems from your 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 scripts your what are you saying to them how are you saying it are you conveying that you do care about them or are you just using the 1980 scripts of have you considered buying or selling? Do you know anybody that might want to buy or sell? Right. Do you can you do anything for me today? I don't know you, Mr. Seller. I, we just met. But can you sell your house so I can make some money? And if you don't, then screw you. Who do you know that might be able to help me? Right. right. That's the message that you're giving them when you say that kind of stuff. And I'm just like, let's let Ricky Kruth go viral so we can put all that to, to rest and bury that stuff back in the 80s. And we can bring out the new and improved model of, of the real estate industry, the real estate coaching scripts, how we operate as, as salespeople and say, Jeremiah, what in the world can I do for you? I don't care about what you can do for me. Right. I could care less about what you can do for me. So through that, I'm influencing the entire industry, one agent at a time to reduce the failure rate. That's my mission is to reduce the failure rate in the real estate industry. And I'm getting messages every week from agents that have tried everything. They were about to have to quit. They found me online somewhere and now they're rolling. You know, they've got listings, they've got sales. They understand it's about relationships over transactions. They're putting in the work. They're using the right words and they're communicating who they are as a person with their prospects. And that's that. See, that's the skill that coaches and trainers don't talk about. Like, how do you really communicate? They're just saying, hey, go, go, go see if they want to buy or sell. They're also telling them if somebody doesn't want to buy or sell something in the next seven days or so, then forget about them. Throw them away. They're garbage. Throw them in the trash. Move on. They're wasting your time. Right. Dude, listen, all of my deals, most of my hundred deals every year from people I talked to five years ago that didn't want to do anything at the time. Right. That's where all the money is. And the people who who, who don't want to do anything, creating those relationships. And through that, you do so many deals because the thing is, is some of them do want to do a deal now. They're just not telling you up front because they don't know you yet. I could go on and on and on, brother. Yeah. So let's just start in the beginning. So let's say, like you said, traditional salespeople, 
They might be used to being a hunter. They're chasing that transaction every day. They're going after it. Oh, you don't want to buy or sell today. Who do you know? How do you change that mindset? You know, like if you grew up, let's say grew up in the, in the industry as you've been doing that for 10 years, how do you change that mindset? Let's start there because I think that's step one. Well, I think that it's it's really through trial and error. I think everybody has to try this on their own. It's nothing I can just say magically, boom, and you're going to all of a sudden just start, you know, you're going to understand this, you know, and, and I tell a lot of people too, it's like, it's like you don't go cold turkey. Like if, if you've been running your business on, on what they can do for you, or if they want to buy or sell this whole time and you found some success, you know, you found some success. Um, but you're not getting where you want to be. You're not growing as fast as you want to grow. And you, and you're introduced to my methods of, okay, I don't care if you want to buy or sell. I want to know what I can do for you short and long term forever, because you are the same thing as my mom, my brother, my cousin, my aunt, you're a family to me now. When you get introduced to that, it's like, oh, well, how are you, how are we going to make money now, Ricky? I need to make money now. I have bills to pay. The thing is, is when you put the work in to talk to enough people, you're going to run into deals because here's the kicker. Closings happen every single day, regardless of market conditions. When the market crashed in 2008, what happened? Closings were still happening every single day, right? All you need is one or two or three a month, you know, as a new agent or, you know, somebody who's just trying to, you know, make it or get by. So when you're introduced, like once you realize business is unlimited and closings happen every day, then now it's just like there's no excuses now like like you if you don't put the work in you're just going to fail because now you know everything's unlimited so when you're introduced to my low pressure how can i help you approach you don't just completely put the brakes on with everything else you ease into it and you start going what i call 50 50. you know you do you do 50 percent, 50 percent. you know you know some of them you kind of say what can i do to help you the others you say you keep going with you know have you considered buying or selling and what happens is, is, is if you do this, you'll eventually start to realize where most of your growth is coming from and slowly but surely you'll switch everything over to what in the world can I do for you? So let's say I'm an agent that's been in the business for a while using that, that old school traditional mentality. So step one, would you say reach out to my existing database and just kind of have a conversation like, Hey, I think so, man. Yeah. Like, like in the beginning, I didn't, I didn't hit up my sphere of influence because I didn't want to be spammy. Okay. And I didn't want to have an awkward moment at Thanksgiving thinking that I'm going to try to sell them something. And then, and then B, B, I didn't, I, I knew that if I was going to succeed in real estate, I was going to have to sell uh, people that I don't know. And so, and, and so my thinking was, I just want to go ahead and move to that second step of people I don't know, because I know if I can't make it there, I'm not going to make it anyway. I might as well go straight to that source. And so I never did the sphere of influence thing. However, that was also in the beginning of my career when it was all about money. It was all about deals. It was all about transactions. Now that I'm in the state of mind that I am now, if I had it all to do over again, I understood this from day one, I could have called my sphere of influence. I would have called my sphere of influence and I would have said, listen, you know, how are you doing? Um, the weather's great. Isn't it gorgeous? Look, I got in real estate and I was just calling to see if there's something I could do for you. No. Cool. Is there an agent that you have in mind? Do you have an agent you work with? Okay, cool. Look, I'm sure at some point in the future, you're going to want to do something. I would love the opportunity to work with you. Is it okay if I stayed in touch with you? What's your email? You know, and get them on that weekly email thing that I do. And like, I would, I would so crush the sphere of influence because I would approach them in a totally different way than I would have in the in the reality of what my the beginning of my career was, you know. So absolutely, I think that you should you should do it the Ricky way. You should absolutely say, you know, what I'm saying like like what in the world can I do for you? Like I'm not here to try to get you to buy or sell anything. I just want to know if I can ever help you now or later or whatever. If not, that's cool too. If you have another agent, that's cool too. Uh, you know, I don't care if you do anything. I just want to help you if you do. And I absolutely would have would have uh, would have done that if I knew then what I know now. So yeah, if a new agent comes in the market, I think first thing call your sphere, everybody you know, and ask them what in the world you can do to help them. And I think as existing agents too, would you agree? Like if if they've been doing it wrong their entire career, now is a good time to go back and say, hey, I got a confession. 
you know, here's what I'm doing. I, I'm changing the way I do business. I just want to call and say, hey, can I help you? Just like you said, do it the Ricky way. I, I love that. Like, this is going to be a new hashtag, like do it the Ricky way. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, if uh, it depends on where they are in their career, you know what I'm saying? Like if they're, if they have time to call their sphere of influence because they're not so busy closing a hundred deals a year, then absolutely, you know, go back. And if you, if you're, if you're in a, if you're stuck in a place and you don't know exactly how to get out of it, yeah, go back to your sphere if, if that's something you want to do. At this point, I have so many past clients, so many like deals, so many things happening. You know, I don't even have time to call my past clients. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have time to call those people. You know, it's, it's, uh, and, and that's not a bad problem to have, you know what I'm saying? But the, but the service does dwindle and then you have to figure out other ways to, to capitalize on your past clients and stuff. But yeah, I mean, you know, sphere and past clients, you know, your past clients to me is your sphere, right? right. Like, like your sphere is everybody. It's not just people you knew when you grew up and your baseball coach and your teacher from fourth grade. It is everybody that, you know, like, like your sphere is your past clients, even people that didn't buy or sell anything, you know, like that's your sphere too. And your job as an agent is to get that sphere and grow that sphere more and more and more and more and more, you know, and just have it, have it at such a size, it's such a massive, you know, size that, that, that it's like a boulder rolling down a hill. Nothing can stop it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So if, if you're calling on, on new people, so you talked a little bit about that, and let's get right into what to say, what to say, and like who, are, and and what does your your daily schedule look like? Because you have to have some kind of structure, right? I mean, to to to, to be as efficient as possible, to do as much business as you do, plus 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 all the coaching, the social media, everything that you do. Like, yeah. how is it possible? Because right? some people are watching, like this guy's not human; he's a robot. He must have clones. There's something going down. Like, how does he do it all? Man, like, I, I think like, I think the first thing is, is that not everybody can do what I do, right? Like, I think, I think that a lot of it is like DNA and genetic structure that, that my brain, like I can mentally handle so much at once. Okay. I refer to it as my cup. Okay. Everyone has a different size cup. Your cup represents how much you can mentally handle at one time. Okay. And everybody has a different size cup. So your job, okay, to reach your full potential, what you have to do is A, figure out how big your cup is. Okay. You got to figure out how big your cup is. And then once you figure out how big your cup is, i.e., how much you can handle mentally at one time. Okay, then you, you kind of you want to stay right there in that zone where you're completely full with as much as you can handle comfortably. Right. So how do we do that? Well, we have to overwhelm ourselves with business. We have to make like 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 fifteen hundred calls in a week or, you know, send out what at like you have to completely like a lot of people are scared to overwhelm themselves with business because they're scared that they won't be able to handle everything. Right. In reality, that's what you need to do immediately is overwhelm yourself so that you know where your breaking point is. And then, and then that's the only way to find out what your breaking point is, is to overwhelm yourself. OK, have more than you can handle for just a second. It's not like when you do it, it's going to you're going to be overwhelmed forever. It's going to be like a day or two where you're kind of like crazy. OK, then, then once you realize where your breaking point is or how big your cup is, you can scale back to be right at the brim of the cup where you're handling just as much as you can possibly handle at any given time and stay there at all times. And that's how you reach your full potential, right? Knowing, knowing what your limits are mentally, mental capabilities and what you can handle and then, and then staying in that zone at all times. Okay. So for me, I have a really big cup. Now there are people with, you know, I guess even bigger cups, you know what I'm saying? Like I have like a bucket, like a five gallon or 50 gallon, you know, drum, like other people have like teacups. But the thing is, is that I found where my limit is. I know where I'm comfortable and, and that's it. Like I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm a man who is living up to his full potential each and every day. I take advantage of every little second. I get up at 4:30. I go to the gym for a couple hours. 
I go to the office, I make my calls, I study my business and prioritize everything. You know, I do the lunch thing, I have appointments and like I have, I have schedules in my head, you know, like I'm going to post YouTube videos at five o'clock in the morning. You know, I'm going to post on Instagram at 11 o'clock and five o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning and five o'clock in the afternoon, twice a day. You know, I'm going to, you know, um, you know, do my weekly email every Wednesday. I'm going to make phone calls, whether it's, whether it's cold calls or follow ups or past clients, whatever the case may be, I'm going to make those calls between nine and 11 if I don't have any other appointments going on. And so I think, man, that a lot of people do say, how do you sell a hundred properties a year as a single agent with one assistance? Crazy. And I'm thinking, and I'm sitting here thinking, look guys, I didn't like say, I'm going to go sell a hundred properties, right? What happened was, is I work my face off every day, all day long. And then a hundred properties comes out the other side. You know what I mean? Like I didn't set, set a light. I wasn't like, I'm going to do a hundred deals this year. I'm just like, whatever comes out the other side of me putting maximum effort in and keeping my cup completely full is what I'm going to live with because that's my potential. I'm going to live at my full potential daily, every day. And so whatever the results are is whatever comes out of that. I can't control what the results are. All I can control is staying at full mental capacity. So I like what you said there about you can only control what you're going to be doing on a daily basis. So focusing on the activities rather than the production or the outcome of those activities. Like you do one, the other one is just a result of it anyways. So it's, I think too often people are focused, like you just said, a hundred transactions. Holy cow, yeah. I can't do that. But focus on these activities every single day, and that business will come, right? And yeah. that's what you're saying. So, what are some of the ways that they can, for people who are maybe watching for the first time, where can they get the leads? Where you know, let's talk about the actual implementation of it. Well, about? well, I mean, here, here's the thing, man. Like, you know, what I'm doing with the industry is, is I all I'm doing is I'm sharing. Okay. I'm sharing with the industry for free, no charge, every single little detail of everything that I do. Okay. Everything that I say, my daily routine, you know, my weekly email, the, the details of it, how I do it, my phone scripts, videos of me making calls, um, my social media strategy, my website, every little thing I'm just sharing with everyone in hopes that you just take something out of it. Like you can do everything to a T. You can take one little thing out of it. You can say it's all all crap and go somewhere else. The good thing is, is I didn't charge you for that crap, right? <laughs> and you, and you, you can't come back to me and say, oh, your stuff doesn't work. Okay, well, go pay a thousand dollars a month and, and treat people like like numbers. Then if that's if you think that that's going to be the way that you're going to succeed really fast. Um, but at the end of the day, man, like zero to diamond.com. It's, it's everything is there, man. All my processes, all my programs. I use Red X to find the phone numbers. You can get a discount on my website. I use constant contacts to send my weekly emails there. I have an ebook, how I made, how I make a million dollars a year in real estate with email. Um, I mean, there's just so much content on YouTube and Instagram and in the website and on the Facebook page. Um, about how I'm doing what I'm doing. Here's the funny thing. You might think this is really hilarious, but I answer every single message, every DM on Instagram, every email, every every message on Facebook, every single one of them. I spend literally probably an hour a day right now on answering agents who are hitting me up on Instagram, Facebook, email, text message. I spend about an hour a day just responding to people asking me really basic questions but I still spend that time because I want to help them. You know what I mean? So if anybody's watching, like needs something or has a question or, or there's anything I can do to help them, just hit me up. And within 24 hours or so, you're going to get a response and it's probably going to be some kind of life changing, you know, words. So again, the website was zero to diamond.com. Z E R O. Yep. Yep. You go there. Yeah. Create a free account. It's totally free. There's no like, oh, sign up for free and we'll get you for some money later. It's totally free. There's a free course. We do live training twice a month with me. Um, there's an action plan, a 90 day action plan. 
And uh, there's a Facebook group with over 13,000 uh, agents in the group. And it's a super positive community. Everybody, because it's all about relationships. People aren't trying to get each other for stuff. And uh, we keep it really clean. And uh, there's a lot of accountability in the, in the Facebook group. And dude, I'm super humbled about where this has gone over the past year and where it's going now. I just went to Miami and I sat, I sat uh, in this little... Uh, this backdrop, the zero to diamond backdrop, I sat there for over an hour of people that agents that were in line to get a picture with me and tell me how much I changed their life. I mean, that was like, that, that, that was crazy to me. Yeah, that, that's, that's amazing. I, I, I saw the pictures there too, when you're in Miami. Um, yeah. For the folks that are watching, if you want some of this information in the comments, all you have to do is comment 90 day action spaces in between 90 day action 90 the number nine zero day action i have an autobot already set up it will reply back with ricky's 90 day action plan and we have one more it's the uh tell us a little bit about the scroll because I, I went on i went onto the facebook page and i was like this is so good this is so good like i have to the scroll the um i'm gonna click on it here actually i could just bring it up oh 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 that uh <laughs> you talking about that that like cartoon picture so it's this just in the comments if you write scroll it'll reply back with the the scroll from shoot i gotta pull this up real quick you have it on on the uh i'll share it in a minute let's just keep going and then i'll come back to it okay so talking about scripts and then you, all the scripts are on there for just about anything any kind of conversation you can have with anybody about anything you have on your site, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm upgrading it all the time. Um, like I'm going to add a door knocking script, which the door knocking script is basically the circle prospecting script. You just use the same script. I mean, it's all the same stuff, man. Listen, this stuff is universal, not only for real estate, for any industry, right? It's like you can call anybody up and say, hey, you know, Mr. Johnson, hey, cool. Hey, this is Ricky Cruz, Remax of Orange Beach. How you doing? Okay, cool. Hey, yeah, uh, I'm doing good too. I'm enjoying the weather. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, man, cool. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house around the corner just sold. Then if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. Boom. Then you follow the script to find out they have an agent and get their email. If they're an expired listing, it's like, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time. You know, I saw your house expired off the market. Didn't if there's anything in the world I could do for you. And I don't want to take up too much of your time. I saw your house was for sale by owner. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you. You know, I didn't want to take up too much of your time today. I saw you were looking at properties online. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you. You know, like uh, past clients. It's like, hey, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just want to check in, see if there's anything in the world I could do for you. <laughs> like, like it, it's insane, man. And like this, this is like, in, this is, this is worldwide, like industry wide. There's, there's nothing out there that you can't call somebody and say, I'm doing this business. Didn't know if there's anything I could do for you today and when. Yeah, I mean, every single one they ended with, is there anything I can do for you? Right. right. I mean, I think there's each one. Absolutely. It's a good and, 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 philosophy. Yeah. And, and it's like it's like when the seller said, like when you when they when they realize it's a real estate agent and, you know, and they're, they're used to all the other, you know, agents calling them with all their, you know, what can they, what can what can the seller do for them kind of things. They're like, they get immediately in de defense mode and they're like, I don't want to sell my house, you know, or whatever. And I'm just like, good. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't want you to sell your house either. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not what I'm calling about. I'm calling to see what I can do for you, not what I can't do for you. You know what I'm saying? All right. So I have it here. It's, it's the scroll marked nine by Ogman Mandino. Okay. Does that ring a bell? No. Okay. I'm going to just, I can pull this right up. I can do a screen share. Boom. Share my desktop screen. One I second. I like this. Let's see. I got to check this out. What yeah. is this? Oh, this oh, oh. What a, yeah. I see. What, I, this is something that one of the agents in the group posted. Okay. I have no idea what it is. Sure. All right, so the scroll, Mark, this is, it was it was on there, so I, I thought I would share it. My dreams are worthless. My plans are dust. My goals are impossible. All of no value unless they're followed by action. I will act now. Never there has been a map, however, however carefully executed to detail and scale. Then it goes on, but everything, it's an affirmation. Obviously, I will act now. I will act now. Yeah. 
and it's I, I think it's it's so powerful because as agents sometimes we're our own worst enemies. Like, oh, they didn't like me. Oh, they rejected me. Oh, oh, you know, and it's always woe is me. I feel like you're, you know, like nobody likes me. Where's my tail? I'll tell you right now, man. Um, like I'm, I'm really, really kind of obsessed with the fact that everybody's everybody. The reason why any agent is failing is an absolute excuse. Like, like, like I'm so obsessed with this right now because because I can't, there's, there's absolutely no reason for anyone to fail except for what you, what you, what you conceive in your mind is, is like a roadblock or a problem, you know, like, like seriously, man, like if I could say anything to the people watching, if you're, if you're, if you think that there's something in your way between you and success, there's really not, there's nothing in between you and the only thing between you and success is you getting whatever that is out of your head and putting in the work. And it doesn't matter what work you put in. See, this is another problem. You know, they think, well, should I do this or that? Do both. You know what I'm saying? Or do one or the other. It doesn't matter. You could do either. You're going to win. Right. Um, it's like, you know, the president, before he got president, they were at, they asked him how he's going to get more jobs, you know, because he kept saying, I'm going to get jobs. I'm going to get jobs. And they kept saying, but how? And he said, by doing it. And they're like, no, no, no. We want to know how, like by actually doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, there's no answer. Like, this isn't like how you do it. Okay. You do it by doing it. You know what I mean? Um, hold on. So, so, uh, like I'm really obsessed with the fact that everybody has an excuse, like they don't have the money or they're scared or they, you know, some like, okay, a deal fell through. Listen, when a deal falls through, somebody rejects you or if something happens bad, it's such a positive, it's the definition of success. Like it's such a positive situation because you learned something, became a better agent. Okay. Through that. OK, that's how agents become good agents is failing and then learning the lessons of the failures. But, dude, now you don't have to spend any more time on that deal. Right. Now you don't have to spend any more time on that client prospect. That deal is done. It opens you up. It opens you up to the to the huge wide sea of more deals. It's unlimited. Right. Closings happen every day. You can't call every property owner in your market ever in your life. So like losing that deal was a good thing because you, you, you know, it, it, it was clogging up your time. Now you can take the time that you would have spent on that deal, showing the properties, writing the offer, negotiating, getting the listing, putting pictures in MLS, putting a sign up, a lockbox, box, letting agents show it, negotiating, closing title companies, lenders, inspectors, right? All those hours, you now got that back because you lost this deal and you think it's, you think it sucks. You think this is horrible. You're like, feelings are hurt. It stings. You know, it's it's got you crippled. You're paralyzed. You don't want to do anything else because you don't want to get that feeling anymore when really you're looking at it wrong. Like you learn so much and you got so much future time back that if you'll spend that future time going and getting five more deals in that same time frame rather than sulking about that deal, then you're going to multiply your business. Like losing deals multiplies your business. Right. Yeah. So how how do you stay positive through those, you know, like it, it because you got future time back. Because now now you have more time on your hands to go get more deals and do more, do more deals. Like, how could you not be excited about that? <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's so good, but it's it's something that people here need to hear again and again because they, they feel like you know, and depending on, let's say like I have, I have a lot of friends in the New York market and for them, they lose a deal and it's, oh my gosh, it's a half a million or it's a million or it's something point something. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's focusing on the positive of it. Hey, you freed up all this time, all this time. Here's all this the thing, time. man. Losing deals is completely inevitable. You're going to lose deals. You're not going to win every single deal. No one has ever won every deal. So the fact that it's going to happen and you know that it's, in, it's inevitable, okay, now we got to start facing the fact that it is inevitable. How are we going to handle it, right? On the flip side, that was never your deal in the first place. 
That was never your money in the bank in the first place. That is not your property. You do not own that property. Someone else owns that property and thought about using you. Okay. It's their decision to change their mind and use a different agent or not buy the property or whatever the case may be. That's their decision, not yours. So why so until you until you close it and put the money in your bank, that is that was never your deal. That was never your money. Okay. And that's a big problem. People count the money when they put it under contract and when they lose it, they think they lost the money. They never had the money. Right. So, I mean, there, there's a lot of different ways you can think about it, but, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, man, it, it, it is an excuse. Right. Yeah. It's all like, oh, lost a deal. I don't want to lose any more deals. So I don't want to make any more phone calls. <laughs> okay. We got See you later. Demetri here says the most important word is when you lose a deal is next. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that that's good. But what I really want people to realize is the future time. The few, I had an agent that, 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 um, I had an agent that had a development he was going after and he was going to go meet with the developers and he was, he was advising me on, or he, he wanted me to advise him and consult with me on what he should do with the developers. How should he go about it? How should he lock this listing in? It was going to be like $20 million in sales and all this and all that. Right. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I said, a, be yourself, go in there, ask them what you can do to help and make it happen. Right. Be yourself, be your personality. Don't try to be somebody you're not right. If they like you good, if they don't great, if you don't get it, it doesn't matter. Why? Well, it's $20 million in sales. Okay. If it's, if it's uh, let's say it's 80, 50, home, 50 homes or hundred homes or 80 homes or whatever. Do you know how much time it's going to take that person to go to, to, to list it? I'm doing one right now. I've got like two 80 unit developments happening right now and it takes a lot of time. And if I didn't have those developments, I have so much time on my hands that I could do so many deals. You know what I'm saying? And, and like if you lose the big ones that got away, that's even more future time than, you know, like the little ones that got away. You know what I'm saying? So like it doesn't matter what the size of it is. The bigger the deal, the more time you're getting back if you lose it. You know what I'm saying? So you talked a little bit about your cup and your well, your fifty-gallon drum, and most of us, most, most of us have a cup, but you got a fifty-gallon drum. So yeah. when you find that limit, and you're right there, you're just over, just below the tipping point where you might spill over. How do you find the right person to help you? The right, whether you want to call them an admin or an operations manager, because you're going to be taking away time in training this person. You don't want to have to do it again and again. Like, how do you find the right person? It seems like you found them, and I think I think, I think I think patience is a big big thing right here, um, because there's two there's two things I could say. One is that I always wait way too long to hire somebody, right? Right. Like right. like I waited till I had thirty listings to hire my assistant. I should have hired her when I had fifteen listings, right? right. But. It was great that I waited that long because I knew the business inside and out. I knew every little thing that she needs to do to help me. If I would have hired her earlier, I might not have known a lot of the stuff that I needed her to do because handling 15 listings is not the same as handling 30 listings. And it's not the same as handling 50 listings. You know, it's more of a workload. So right. for me to actually have gone through that and felt what that, you know, got that feeling of what that feels like to have 30 listings and handle everything on my own actually helped me train her better, help her better, get her in a better place. Right. And, and it's the same thing right now. Like I've been, I've been filming and editing my YouTube videos. Okay. Um, like, like Blake does the daily grind, but then all the educational videos I've been filming and editing them myself. Okay on top of everything else. So that was three videos a week on top of the, the daily grind one. So I've, and I've been doing that for like a year. Okay. So <laughs> I just now hired somebody to start kind of taking some of that over for me. And the thing is, bro, is I waited so long to do it. And it's, and it's a really good thing because I know the editing process, like I understand the editing, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a practitioner. Okay. It's, it's like, it's like whenever I waited, 
you know, a decade, over a decade and three years of selling a hundred properties before I start trying to coach. Like if you guys, if you guys watch the timeline of the stuff that's happened in my life, I always wait way too long to do stuff. Why? Because I want it to be real. Like I want to know stuff. I want to understand the process. I want to be that guy that if my assistant quit tomorrow, I could step right in and start handling everything. You know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a lot of agents out there that can't do that. You know, because they hired the, they hired the assistant too early and they don't understand everything the assistant does. So I think there's two ways to look at it. My advice is just be just you know, wait really long time past the point of needing one. Keep going for a little while longer and then hire one. How do you find one? Find one with experience. You know, find somebody, you know, put ads out, ask around and 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 like ask them, you know, put ads out about like, you know, like need experience needed, you know, like MLS experience or were you an, were you uh, an, an assistant for somebody else? You know what I'm saying? So I think uh, finding somebody with experience is key and waiting longer than you actually need somebody so that you can really have the experience yourself is key. So uh, as you train them, are, are you kind of like documenting what you're doing in the case that if you had to do it again or is there anything in place or you just kind of like you got it and if you had to do it again, you just do it again? Yeah, because everybody's different, you know, like um, when I hire somebody, I'm trying to keep them for life. You know what I'm saying? Um, so my my assistant now has been with me for like five or six years and, you know, she's not going anywhere. You know, I mean, treat them right. Um, make everything, make everything right. Make everything good in the world. You know, she has three kids. She can leave anytime she wants and go help them do whatever. Um, you know, like, um, you know, treating people right and they're not going to leave you. Um, if you make more money, they should make, be making more money. Um, you know, so if you find somebody good, don't let them go. That's one thing. Um, if they're bad, you're going to know really soon. You can fire them really quick and, and start over. And it didn't matter what you taught them because they, they didn't learn anything and it didn't matter. So you're going to have to start over anyway, you know? All right. And anything for those that are watching on the, you know, for the analytical personality types, like programs, apps, equipment, anything that you're like, without this, I would be really challenging for me throughout my day besides your smartphone, obviously, and your charging cable. <laughs> you know your your um, the phone charger and anything else that you feel like these are must haves for my business that I think everybody need half or need to know about. Um, dude, for real estate agents, seriously, mm -hmm. I think Red X or any program that finds property owners and dials them for you is the greatest thing that ever happened to real estate agents. Property owners are the highest quality prospects. Um, you know, in every market, they're unlimited. You can't call them all. And, um, you know, with today's technology, you can, you can, you can find everybody in the subdivision's phone number with the click of a mouse, which used to take me eight hours to find a hundred. Now I can find thousands or how many ever I want in the click of a mouse and then start dialing them, you know, like automatically. Um, it's, it's amazing, man. What used to take me 15 hours to look up and call a hundred numbers by, by hand, now it takes me an hour and a half. I'm doing things 10 times faster than I did when I first started in real estate in 2002 when there were no dialers or there wasn't any, there wasn't Zillow, Facebook, there was nothing when I started. And uh but you know, I built my entire business circle prospecting and calling neighborhoods and creating relationships and um I mean, dude, hands down, Red X finds the best data and and you know, the power of clicking a mouse and finding like super high quality cell phone numbers and stuff um, and, and, uh, of targeted subdivisions and then dialing those people and asking them if there's anything in the world you could do to help them in creating your business and database is uh, it's mind blowing to me. And the crazy thing is nobody's really taking advantage of this. New agents don't realize the way it was. So they're not taking advantage of the way it is. So here's a, a question from, uh, I'll just bring it up. I, I think I'm, I'll know your answer, but Yvette says, uh, Ricky, can you make more dialing, door knocking, or social media? Um, dialing to me is the king, right? 
door knocking is really good, but not as efficient as dialing because you can dial so many more people per hour than you can door knock. Okay. Um, and then social media is kind of like social media is, is, is kind of like the elephant in the room in this sentence because it's kind of a whole different ball game rather than dialing and door knocking. Social media is just like throwing yourself out there. Now, social media can be used to like target your past clients and send stuff to them or whatever. But the thing about social media is if you're getting leads from social media, what do you have to do with those leads? You have to call them. You have to dial them, right? You got to call them. You can't just put, you know, ads on social media and people are just going to just send you contracts in the mail. You know what I mean? Like you got to call them, talk to them, see how they're doing, see what you can do to help them, show them the property, show up, tell them how much their house is worth, make sure they're comfortable with you. Making people feel comfortable with you is where you make the most money. To answer your question, none of the above. What makes the most money is the skill of making people feel comfortable with you as a person, that you care about them, that you're professional, hardworking, knowledgeable, right? Honest, dependable. When they feel comfortable that you are all those things that they want in an agent, that's where you're going to make your most money. It doesn't matter where you get your leads. It doesn't matter if you get them from dialing, door knocking, social media, Zillow, you know, sphere of influence, past clients. It doesn't matter where you get your leads from. What matters is, is do you have the skill to make people feel comfortable with you? And if not, are you working on that skill? Are you working on your tone, speed of your voice, body language, saying the right things, not coming across? Hey, 95% low pressure. 5% high pressure. Let's get it. <laughs> I love it. I love the intensity, man. So a, a couple more questions. I know you probably have to go to another appointment here. Um, we have, how do, what about the do not call list and what database do you use to put all of your leads in? That's probably a okay. great database. Yeah, so, so I just put the people in uh, constant contacts. Uh, constant contacts. Uh, if you go to zero to diamond.com, you can get a discount on, on Red X. You can uh, start the free trial with constant contacts and all that stuff. But constant contacts will like that's where I send my weekly email from. So all my email of all my past clients and everybody on my database goes into constant contacts so I can send a weekly email out. So that's that. Right. Um, not really trying to keep up with them, like how old they are, when their birthday is, what their name is, not really trying to keep up with all that stuff. I just want to provide value to them and let them call me when they get ready. Okay. You know, make as many, make so many phone calls that prospects start cold calling you. Right. And then the flip side, um, the do not call situation. Okay. Do not call. Like I need to come up with something for like DNC to make it sound phony because it is. No one's ever been fined. Like, you know, I mean, in Canada, there's different rules. Okay. And I get that. But I actually have some agents in Canada that call do not call uh, people. Nothing happens. So with do not call, uh, you know, A, no one's ever been fined. Okay. Let's get that like out in the open. But B, like the way that I read the rules, even if they wanted to try to get you, you have to have like repeatedly tried to call them several times, like blatantly. You know, like they said, I'm on the do not call list. Don't call me anymore. And then you call back and say, hey, you know, like you have to continue calling them in order to get in trouble. But I call do not call people and tell you the truth. A lot of the dialers and the different companies that provide the data, they mark a lot of the do not call numbers. I think this is my opinion that, that they mark a lot of them that aren't necessarily do not call because they don't know for sure. and They want to cover their cover their self. But the do not call ends up being the best quality phone numbers, like cell phone numbers and stuff like that. You're really losing a lot if you're not calling them. And it feels weird saying that because it's like supposed to be against the law and stuff. But the thing is, is that it, it you know, no one's ever been fined. I've made millions off of calling do not call people. And you're, you're just losing out a lot of opportunity. But it's your choice. I think you should do what you want to do. And, um, you know, that's just my opinion. And I think just to piggyback on that, the people that are getting complained about are not calling and saying, what can I do for you? I mean, like you call somebody, you go, Hey, you know, I'm doing real estate in your area. What can I do for you? They're not going to call and complain to anybody. It's the ones that are like, Hey, listen, Oh, you don't want to sell. You don't want to sell. And they're like hammering the phone and they're antagonizing the person on the other end. Like, sure. That's going to be a problem for you. But I think just like you said, it's just an excuse that, Oh, what about the call list? Uh, yeah. 
stop worrying about stuff and start doing yeah. it. The yeah, car. yeah, absolutely, man. Total excuse. Just do it. And if it is an excuse, filter the do not call it, call people out and call the people that aren't on the do not call list. It's as easy as that. A lot of agents do that, you know, so. All right. Well, Ricky, I appreciate you spending so much time with us. Um, and, and again, if, if you want to follow our Ed Talks and we have experts like this every so often just diving deep and and giving us nuggets of wisdom of how we could be better in real estate. There's no charge for what I do either. You know, if, if you put in the comments below ZTD, that will subscribe you to the broadcast. But keep in mind also 90 day action. 90, the number 90 space day space action. That will get you Ricky Cruz's 90 day action plan. And rather than, you know, flood the comments section with all of his scripts, go right to zero to diamond.com. It's www like World Wide Web diamond.com. It's all on there. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. Reach out to Ricky. Just like he said, I was and I was surprised. I know how busy how his his coaching has exploded in the last year. I sent him a mess Facebook message like, "Hey man, you want to do the show?" He's like, "Yep." What time's good? I'm like, "Wait, what?" what are you so responsive. It, it blew my mind. So again, thank you, Ricky. I really appreciate it. And you know, you're out there changing lives. There's a, a million comments here of people that have said, you know, you're the best coach on the planet. And we appreciate you, man. Thank you for making the real estate industry better. No, man, I appreciate you. I think you're doing the same thing. So, you know, you guys are gonna see a lot of both of us. So looking forward to it. All right. Thank you, everybody.